I'm Dave McGrail. We're getting down to the brass tacks and hard facts of the dangers of using automatic combination nozzles for standpipe operations. NFPA 14 is the document that guides fire protection engineers and fire code writers in terms of determining what should be the pressures associated with standpipe systems. Buildings built prior to 1993 required a 65 PSI residual pressure at the topmost or the most remote outlet with 500 GPM flowing. Based on the tragic events of the One Meridian Plaza fire that occurred in 1991, the NFPA 14 committee changed that to 100 PSI post-1993. So buildings built post-1993 now have a 100 PSI requirement, residual pressure at the topmost outlet or the two most remote outlets with 500 GPM flowing. On our drill ground today, we did a comparison. We compared inch and three quarter hose, 150 feet with an automatic combination nozzle compared to two and a half inch hose, 150 feet with a smooth bore, one and an eighth inch nozzle. Here's the numbers we came up with at 40 PSI outlet pressure. At 40 PSI for the inch and three quarter with the automatic combination nozzle, we weren't able to get a reading on the flow meter. The flow meter indicated zero, which basically means there was a flow of something less than 20 GPM. The firefighters at the nozzle, just like at One Meridian Plaza, were able to put a gloved hand in front of the stream and stop the forward progress of that stream. For the two and a half inch attack line at 40 PSI, 150 feet with the one and an eighth inch smoothbore tip, we were able to produce a stream of 207 GPM. Now once again, that's not the optimum stream for the two and a half inch hand line, but that's a powerful fire attack stream that might be able to stop a fire in a high rise building. So once again, at extremely low pressures, the recommendation is to use that high volume, low pressure weapon of two and a half inch hose coupled with a smooth bore nozzle for safety and success on the fire ground in high rise and standpipe equipped buildings. <laughs>